uh, Richard. Richard and Keith, uh, uh, good afternoon to you both. Glad I put up uh, the faders here and uh, I'm sure that you're, you're being heard as well as viewed because we're, uh, we're online uh, as well if anybody wants to tune in on Facebook or on uh, YouTube. Anyhow, good afternoon to you both. Good afternoon to you. Yeah. All right, let's start with you, uh, Keith. You, um, uh, first of all, t- uh, tell me uh, the, 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 what a roaster is rather than a brewer, or what, what, uh, what exactly, what do you excel at? What sort of coffee making what, do you? What do we do, essentially? <laughs> so the coffee roaster is, uh, essentially, we source coffees from, say, Africa, Central America. Uh, we get them imported, but whenever coffee's imported, it's green, almost like a dried pea. Right. And then in order to make that something that you can drink, we have to essentially cook it. And uh, the coffee roaster is like a large tumble dryer. So we roast the coffee and make it so that uh, we can sell it off then to cafes and to shops and to for people to brew at home. Okay. So All right. That's the coffee roasting side of things. And then we head to Australia now. It's going to be a coffee brewing. So we take coffee that I roasted and try and make it taste as well as possible for a panel of judges. Right. So yeah, it's the world final of the Brewers' Cup okay. in Melbourne. All right. So there's 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 more to it than you would think. There's a lot more to it than you would think. It's different. We just walk into your say local cafe or local coffee shop and yeah. see the barista pulling a shot of coffee. But the other work that goes on either before that or the other side of things are a lot more technical than you might imagine. Hmm. Um, I, I mean, this is interesting because you've you've come through the 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 like you've landed the already in back in January uh, you won the the Irish Brewers Cup. So. Sure, there was a right bit of preparation and planning that went into that. Oh, absolutely, yeah. It started again maybe months before that to, to get the idea. So first you have to work out kind of what coffee you're going to use because the variety out there is like pretty much every country's coffee to taste different. Mm. Different varietals taste different and how they've been processed after they've been harvested will make them all taste different. So you kind of first of all pick which coffee you want to use and then work out how actually to roast that because if you're cooking it to a temperature, say... You know, a couple of degrees over, a couple of degrees under is going to either absolutely ruin the whole thing, essentially. That, that can <laughs> that, determine the taste oh, as well. Yeah, yeah. You ask Richard to hear if I, if I press the wrong button on the roaster, I just cost him a couple hundred euro at a time. Oh. <laughs> the, 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 mar- the margins, so to speak, yeah. are, are that fine. Like yeah. the, the best analogy is the best analogy is probably baking. So um, roasting is effectively, effectively the same as baking, except it's even more precise. So if you can imagine baking something very difficult to bake it's just exactly the same type of thing it's like yeah. um if you if you change it so every everything's controlled by computer and it's it's based on gas changes and um and uh, it's quite scientific but the ultimate thing then is your senses it must be sensorially very good so you must taste at the end of the day as well are you know? able to do that in-house yeah so everything's controlled by computer um uh, our, our roasters can control by computer every roast is logged uh, and we go to crazy lengths, like testing the moisture levels of beans as they come in. Uh, we then log everything, send it to the cloud. We'll then examine it after a roast. We'll taste everything we roast, and we even color track every single roast so we can tell the exact color of brown. <laughs> <laughs> so it's pretty, it's pretty scientific. But then uh, the whole point of this is to make it as tasty as possible. Yeah. So at the end of the day. absolutely, and be happy with the finished article uh, or finished product. Mm. Uh, and uh, I mean, you've obviously carefully sourced the, the coffee beans yeah so at the minute we use import agents so we have agents in switzerland berlin and australia who, who do the groundwork for us who actually walk the farms and and i'd say maybe 70 percent of the the actual coffee quality comes from the beans themselves and then the other 30 cent 30 percent is probably up, up to us so the biggest job for us really is probably sourcing um so you can only do so much with what you have so the old expression of bad things in and bad things out we can only <laughs> yeah. we, ha- we have to really find the best farmers producing the best things and, and get it better you know there's there's two when in the coffee world am I right in saying there's two signature events one is the World Barista Championships and then the other is the World Brewers Cup and Keith it's the World Brewers Cup that you're it's in the World Brewers Cup I'm doing yeah so the Barista Championships is what you might see with your traditional espresso machine yeah. you see the barista pulling the shots steaming the milk and doing that I tried that before when I was over living in England, but I uh, didn't get on too well with it. So I thought look, this year we'd try have a go doing the brewers one because in the roastery now, like we don't keep any milk there, so all the coffee we drink down there is pretty much black. So I thought, well, if I'm using this all the time, then why not have a go and see how far we can actually go with the thing? So. If you're a, a coffee aficionado, uh, for for want of a better description, uh, which uh, which would be 
which would be deemed to be the a real coffee? Would it be you know those that are involved in the uh, barista championships or those that are in the Brewers Cup? Both really, I think. Well, yeah. f- for me, I find that the Brewers Cups just a wee bit more technical, because like for your barista championship, you know, I say the machine helps a lot with the work. So even your flow rate of the water passing through the coffee can all be controlled by the machine, uh, pressing buttons essentially. And then, but for the Brewers Cup, it's all up to me. Then I, everything's measured out to the point decimal of a gram, and how quickly or slowly I can pour the water depends on how fast the coffee flows through the filter, and depend then how the how the coffee is going to taste. And same thing as we said with roasting, with the brewing. If you're five or ten seconds over or under your kind of target time, then you're it's going to completely affect the taste of the coffee. So, so say for example I wanted the coffee to brew for 2 minutes and 30 seconds so if, say if it brewed for 2 minutes and 20 seconds it would start to taste a bit more sour and if it started to go on to maybe 240 it would start to taste over extracted and kind of a bit dark and murky so it's kind of trying to hit that point and then to be able to do that with 3 coffees at the same time so for the judges I have to brew up 3 identical coffees at the same time using say the exact same grams of coffee but also pouring the exact same grams of water so not only is it the judges taste it and evaluate it you know with the sensory they also going to be a technical judges standing over the top of you making sure well did he pour 40 grams of water there or did he pour 40.5 grams of water there and that 0.5 a gram could be enough to either win it or lose the competition essentially like so it's taken a lot of cups of coffee to get to this point. <laughs> oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. I think it's probably, uh, it sounds a little bit unusual to the non-coffee person. Uh, and I think one person described it as a, a combination of crufts and a spelling bee <laughs> is probably the best way. Well, maybe, maybe yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great way to, to increase, I suppose, our um, our learning and quality control in the roastery. Mm. So you're always polishing your skills and I think that's probably the best thing that we're doing, you know, along the way, so. Uh, have have our palates become yeah. better at uh, you know uh, sussing out fine, fine coffees? Yeah, I think you see to put it, things in a timeline, it's a little bit like wine. I think thirty years ago, people would know black tar and blue nun, yeah. and now everyone knows the difference between their sauvignon and their chardonnays and their pinot noirs and their cabernets. Mm. In about twenty years' time, I would imagine that people will probably be taking that same uh, level of interest in coffee, and it's only a matter of time. So I suppose we like to think we're slightly ahead of the curve and getting people to that area. But slowly but surely, people will have a country preference, maybe a varietal preference like they do in terms of wine. But coffee is a little bit more complex because it's even finer. You know, it's very it's, it's a more precise uh, difference between coffees. It's not as exaggerated as wine differences would be. But I think the people will eventually get there where they'll actually differentiate coffees as much as they do wine. Uh, and uh, with you, uh, is there a different? Uh, is there a choice of coffees? Most places you go into, yeah. it's 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 a, a coffee, and that's the one coffee that's used in whether it's a cappuccino or yep. or whatever. With you, is there different types? Can you say, listen, can I have Kenyan or yep? So Colombian? I suppose our our uh, our aim in our roastery is is to put out a really good blend, which we supply to cafes. So, um, we're supplying around the county and also further afield as far as Gori. So we've about thirty five cafes we supply at the minute. Um, it's so new, it's, by the way, it's called New Kid it's called Coffee. It's called New Kid Coffee, and we're down in, in Bonaghy. Um, so that's what we focus on, but we also do single origin coffees, which are just slightly more elevated coffees for those who are really into their coffee. So, as I say, we focus on the blend, but we also have lots of single origin sort of special coffees that if people are really into their coffee to try as well. Okay. Well, listen, uh, Keith, the best look uh, with the competitions on when? So a competition, we fly out next Friday and a competition starts then the following Tuesday. Mm. So there's what, three three to maybe four days of competition depending on how I get on. So on the first day of it, the, there's two rounds, so the, there's two parts of the competition essentially. So the first round is what they call a compulsory round. So it's kind of just to test everybody's general brewing skills. So all 40 competitors will be handed just a random bag of coffee with no label, with no information. You'll be given half an hour to take that backstage and pretty much diagnose what's in it, taste it, and try and make the coffee you know taste as good as you can in that 30-minute period before serving it then to a panel of expert judges. And from then, they will give you a score on that. So that's the first round of it. Then the second round of it is where I'll bring a coffee that I've selected myself. And I'll come on stage in front of a couple of thousand people and give a full presentation on the coffee as to who I am, why I've brought this coffee, why is this coffee special, exactly what you're going to taste in it in front of a live audience oh, in front of a live audience in front of four judges and maybe two judges standing over your shoulder watching you right. oh, and, a TV, and a TV camera stuck in your face 
Uh, uh, to, uh, to use a pun, uh, it sounds like it's going to be fairly intense. Ah, uh, yeah, for sure. You have to be doing something, don't you? Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, and uh, help to get you there and to see can you bring the title back to Ireland. There's been a, a fundraising draw with some great prizes, and people can uh, still enter that. There's a, see, there's uh, hampers and there's a, f- a fantastic bottle of wine, a couple of hundred euro there, and uh, various things. Uh, what, 10 prizes in total or something? Yeah, there's about 10 prizes. If you just head on to the counter's Facebook page, the latest post will have a wee link there. And um, yeah, you can uh, win lots of prizes and help get Keith uh, over there to help with the uh, with all the expenses. Yeah, I yeah. can imagine. Okay. Well, listen, um, the, the best luck in the competition. Uh, I wish you well. Uh, Richard, Keith, thank Cheers. you both. Thanks, Thanks again, John. John. Cheers. Tourism businesses have a brand new mark of employer excellence, driven by the employee's voice. The Employer Excellence Project